familiars, this is Matt Orozco with Macabre Daily. Should also say hello, metalheads, as well, because I'm here with the directors and lead actor of Heavier Trip, which just had its world premiere here at Fantastic Fest last night. So I'm here with Yuka, Johannes, and Yuso. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Oh, well, it's my pleasure. And again, congratulations on the premiere last night. How did it feel to get Heavier Trip out into the world? About time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, really, really good because uh, we shot the film already <laughs> over a year ago, and it's it's been kind of done for for some time now, but it's kind of waiting for distribution and stuff like that. So it was really nice finally having the people to see the film, and I guess we had a pretty good evening last night, and we got a really nice feedback from people, and they seem to like it. So. It's a huge kind of load off the back. So sure. right. I guess we did something that was okay. worth doing. I would agree. Um, as a fan of the first one, I can say that this one definitely felt like the perfect continuation. And like any good sequel, it levels up the first one in some amazingly hilarious ways. Uh, you know, obviously being starting in prison is always a good way to start your movie. <laughs> um, but I'm curious to know, you know, Heavy Trip came out in 2018. Uh, you just, we were talking before that you had your premiere here at South by Southwest. Um, so you're, you're familiar with the Austin film scene. Mm -hmm. At what point did discussions begin after Heavy Trip to start thinking about Heavier Trip? Mm -hmm. I think it was like a year, year after the release. Or we spent a year writing something else. And then the producers approached us with like, Pe people want more. <laughs> and, and we were like, okay, okay, if it's that easy. <laughs> yeah, sure, let's just make it happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, but yeah six wasn't... years. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Johannes, were you involved at this at that point as well? Were you were you in, in contact and saying, yeah, I'm happy to come back as Turo? Yeah, well, for us actors, I think it was like immediately when actually probably when we were making the first one, we we're already talking about like how could this continue, you know, with right. the characters. So for us, and we all became such good friends while making the first one so we were in touch all the time and you know dreaming about it out loud yeah well yeah i guess they'd call that manifesting right yeah, 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 exactly, real. yeah um so you know pretty soon after the producers wanted you all to get into this then of course you just finished filming last year so was there anything as far as kind of the way in which you were thinking about the script initially that changed over the course of that time period as far as your concepts is what we saw on screen last night where the ideas started, or did you arrive there from a lot of different iterations? Well, of course, there was a lot of versions of the script, but I think they kind of the main idea. I was just going through because I'm really bad at remember which year what happened. And I was going through on my laptop all the like when did we did do the first kind of drafts and stuff like that treatments, treatments, and uh, there's a lot of the overall stuff in the first kind of treatments. So I think we kind of nailed, I don't know, nailed, but we got the idea, like, of course, first it was like, how do we not make the same film? Sure. And the first film was kind of about these guys uh, getting, well, the main character getting over his fear of going up on the stage. So, but he got there in the end of the first film, so we couldn't do like, okay, okay, that's, that's not going to be the point of this film. This film was more like, uh, so now they, they are there. So what's next? So yeah. the next thing is, okay, how to keep that, how to keep real for their music and what kind of problems they go from there. So I think that, that came relatively easy. That idea, what's it about? But then we had it like a million versions. So <laughs> I was going through all the old scripts and <laughs> like, like we had, we had some stuff there. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. yeah. Like, uh, we had like, uh, German slugger music assassins, stuff like that at some point. <laughs> yeah, the subgenre which uh, in which Impaled Rectum falls under is very, very specific. Mm -hmm. But I think, yeah. you know, as you all, yeah, that was mentioned at the beginning of the premiere, you know, it's obviously very much a love letter to metal fans. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, to some extent, you kind of, uh, you talked about in the first one, Turo's finding his voice. And this one, he's more figuring out how do we, now that I have my confidence, how do I continue with that? Mm. But there's also seems to be a commentary kind of on maybe the state of the industry, you know, particularly with metal. So, you know, was that intentional? Was that kind of more tongue in cheek? Or is that something, you know, you all feel like there is a kind of an over commercialization happening of, of metal to some extent? I, I wouldn't like, well, it's funny that you, you like make it about metal because when we were writing it, I never like thought that this was like a statement about metal music. 
I always thought it was a statement about the movie industry. Yeah. <laughs> it can like, go either I, way. I, I think yeah. it's like pretty. I guess it's happening in all kinds of fields, like music and films and and games and yeah, and com- like commercializations <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. yeah, and like <clears throat> I'd say, like I'm a history kind of geek. We're reading a lot of history. It's always been the same, right? It's mm-hmm. always been like whenever there is like music business, film business, they made sequels and prequels and stuff like that in the 30s yeah and the 20s we just think it's like people always think it's just about our time but uh yeah it's it is cyclical same. right yeah it's very cyclical yeah. to, to me if but yeah felt, but you also had to, yeah. but you also had it like yeah exactly like you also said we didn't really think about it as a commentary in metal music it's just like commentary i think from us of course it came from the film industry yeah. and kind of of course we had this very disillusioned experience mm-hmm. with the first film because that was our first feature and then you kind of learn so much and you gotta have to let go so much of your sure. kind of own thing own thing in the end so i think it came from there i i could see that as well you have yeah yeah that. The way I've read it is like the first one, you know, the, the personal aspect of of these guys as well. You know, the first film sort of being like their first demo, yeah, which then you know made it finding their voice, yeah. And then the second one, okay, like what's it what's it gonna be now? And to me, it has felt the, the personal level of the script. I don't know how much you've discussed about it, but for me, it's been like right there. So I I think it's uh, it's it's important. You know, that's the key. I mean, I think what, you know, again, my own take on this, right, is that you all have such a great bond as a band and it shows up in the movie. Everyone has a distinct character that they're playing that doesn't feel like there's any similar, like they all have their own, you know, you have, and I, I'm gonna, not going to try and butcher the names, but, you know, the guitarist is a huge Dave Mustaine fan. There's a great gag revolving Dave Mustaine. That's what I just don't <laughs> want to spoil, you know, but you have the drummer who's just trying so hard just to do the right thing, you know. So I think they have these kind of conflicting ideologies and personalities, but that's what makes it so engaging to 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 watch. And I'm curious to know, you know, as you have fans of the first film, you know, who um, who are coming into this, what would you say to them to expect? And then what would you say to someone who hasn't seen the first film? Because I don't think it's required viewing to get into the second one. There's not like a deep lore, but nevertheless, mm-hmm. that obviously does help to have some context. So what would be the two different ways you would pitch this to those those groups? <clears throat> I would say just, you know, don't give a... F- you know, yeah, right, yeah, exactly. Just, you know, <laughs> yeah, my bitch is like, my mom liked it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. she's not into metal. <laughs> oh. I, I, I heard of people seeing the second one first yeah. and then going to the first one, you know, and yeah. it works that way as well. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah think, I think, think it's very easy to approach. Yeah. I don't think you have to take a lot of, like, have a... You don't need that kind of, like, metal insight. I think I hope to get into the film and, nah. and go with the nah. characters. So, so I think it's pretty easy to kind of go into. But for the like the fans of the first film, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Hard for me to say. We tried everything, to made it a good film, and make it like there's a lot of same elements, and it feels like uh, hopefully it feels like the same film, but it tells a new story and it lights up these guys from different kind of places that we didn't see in the first film. Yeah, I am but different. Yeah, so something, different. something more faster and harder and louder. It is. Yeah. I mean, and again, the way it even opens, there's just so much great humor about the prison system, particularly being someone who lives here in the US. I was like, so it's hilarious in a very dark way for me. Uh, but also, um, you know, I you had some collaborations in here with Baby Metal. And, you know, that was kind of a, a really interesting get, especially the way in which you position them in terms of, you know, them being kind of this almost emblematic of the, the commercialization, but also not necessarily using that to make fun of them, right? Mm-hmm. So what was it like working with Baby Metal and how did that come about? <laughs> It's so exciting to have them. Yeah. Said, that was cool, know, right? Like, yeah. yeah. Wow. Was yeah, really like like, like I <clears throat> said last night, after the <laughs> like, he was his crush. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but uh, yeah, like, you want to say something about it. But yeah, it was just jump, something that really, like, worked in the script wise. In the story, we wanted to, like, have a band that, uh, that kind of separates opinions a lot yeah inside the middle genre and that definitely was one like people are saying maybe that's not like real metal or some people love it and 
you have people in between and that just worked inside the film inside the film and then we kind of wrote it with baby metal in mind and usually is a big fan big fan and i became a fan like like when we we're shooting with the girls and i saw them perform and everything but uh <clears throat> but of course we had no idea that we're gonna get them right into the film you write it but you don't know if you're gonna like, yeah get to yeah, that yeah. Point. it was called like, dream big kind of, yeah. yeah dream big this is kind of stupid we have these and we're trying to get in contact with them and it took very little latest moments of filming uh pre-production so we were filming in i don't know month or something and we just got in contact with them and it turns out that their uh producer had seen the first film in japan and he had liked it so i think that was a kind of way in and then we had this great moment when we had this zoom meeting like in five different countries with their kind of huh. team managers and producers and promoters and stuff and then user was again i start and like yeah sure and user had made this like 10 minute monologue in japanese it's amazing <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to this day i have no idea what he said or did that help or not <laughs> well, it's, it's I mean, don't for meetings. <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah. That's, that's the most honorable thing you could do in yeah. a meeting like that is pre yeah. prepare accordingly i mean yeah. you saw as a fan what was it like for you to kind of have that moment come full circle um and i have to say that i'm, I'm not like i i i like really respect what they like uh represent and, yeah. and like as a perfectionist you really have to like uh, i don't know appreciate their craft and like they they do their stuff like clockwork and they're really hard working and and like the shooting conditions were really hard and every, everybody else was like wearing as little clothes as you can because it, it was so hot and they had their costumes on and they're just like st standing in like full full I don't know, control is the wrong wrong word, but just like you're know, very concentrated on what they do. And I was like uh, asking their assistant, like, are they, sh should they, should we give them the, some water or something? And, <laughs> and she was, just, yeah, they're, they're used to this, like standing under the spotlights and, and that stuff. But yeah, it was, it was a really nice experience. And, and we, we, we had that one scene uh, where the girls are holding, holding the cassette. And <laughs> I, after that scene, I went to like the props guy, like, can I, can I, you show me that cassette, cassette one more time, and then I went when, went to the baby metal uh, girls or, or women with the cassette, and they signed it, and then I stole it. <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah, you should. So right? now I have like a baby metal hell to scream from. Oh, oh. that's amazing. I mean, again, I'm gonna die with this cassette. <laughs> I mean, it is. The, it's never been released, so I mean, clearly you've got something even more special now that it's signed by Baby Metal. Yeah. Um, my last, you know, my last question for you all. It's kind of a kind of an interesting one. Is uh, Excluding Heavy Trip, if you were asked to program uh, a, a double feature with Heavier Trip, what is the movie that you would program with it? Doesn't matter if it comes before or after, but what's the movie you'd say this is a good good thing to go with Heavier Trip that's not the first film? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, of course, <clears throat> for me personally, it's it's always Blues Brothers. So. Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. good. Begins is also in prison, so there's kind of yeah, and it's a chaotic, you know, road movie with fugitives. So yeah, yeah gotta love it. What yeah, about yeah. you, Johannes? Oh, that's a good pick. Yeah. Wow. That's thinking. super hard. <laughs> yeah, like Spinal Tap would be quite obvious. Uh, so I would go maybe with that. Yeah, I mean, you turn yeah. up to eleven, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, something, something with music, maybe like a Rocky of our picture show or something. Yeah. <laughs> something like that. No, I think so. I mean, again, the music. I, mean, I didn't get too much into this, but um. I don't know if you worked with anyone outside, you know, for the composition or for the music at all, but um, if you could talk a little more about that, because as a, as a metal fan, I was definitely like nodding my head, you know, definitely doing a little bit of like mini headbanging in my seat last night. So mm. who did you work with on the music for, and, and is it, it is it original music that you're getting composed for this, or is this uh, stuff you had something um, from somewhere else? Mm, well, we had this band, band here to go do the score, score for the film. And I've been like a big fan of that band for a long time. And, uh, like I, I feel bad for for like the first composer. I didn't for the first one, Lauri Lauri Porra. He's he's an awesome composer, and this wasn't like like uh, we need some someone better. But this was just something that I've had in my system for a long time that I had to like get get out. And uh, it was a uh, <clears throat> it was it was they they hadn't done any film score before, so it was like a high risk high reward thing. Work, working with like 
it, it's it's a bit it's a big film and it's a lot of work doing the score, and I've I've never like directed a score like like I did, and they've never done it, so it was like first time for both of us, and that uh, it was a lot harder than I thought, <laughs> and and like uh, more time consuming, and a lot of a lot of like the music you hear is from like their catalog instead of mm, the like original score for the film to do to like time just running out. Well, I mean, and then, that, we, and then we have Mika Lamsa, yeah, yeah, yeah. who did the the songs you hear, the, the metal songs the bands play in the film. Yeah. Okay, he was and also he's, he's, uh, he's a yeah. amazing, uh, amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah also like a virtual, virtual, so yeah. guitar hero. It's part of the experience, I think, just kind of getting the chance to see some of that, hear some of that music, and you don't get often a lot of metal scores. Uh, so I was definitely curious to know a little bit more about the music, because I think that's another part of the draw, right? It's not just it's hilarious, but also the music's quite really, really good. So yeah, and it's great to have the, the songs already when filming and preparing. Yeah, so you can listen like, to them. Tune into the songs, and you know, it's like on repeat. Yeah, you can kind of get into the figure out what your yeah. what your growl face is gonna yeah, look like. Yeah. You, you can see me in the, in the hotel room, you know. It's the marriage. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's what I did for hours. You know? Yeah, and watching other people, I'm sure, you know, watching YouTube videos of guys, you know, rallying, saying, how are they doing? What's the, what's the way? Do I, how do I do my, what mouth shape should I make? I don't know. But um, you just release your beast mode. Yeah. That's basically the thing. Um, well, gentlemen, thank you so much for this time. Uh, for those watching this, you know, November 29th is the release date I'm hearing. Yeah. It's day and date, so you'll be able to watch it in select theaters as well as on VOD. Um, and again, please make sure to check this out. Um, you know, we, this is such a fun, fun ride, such a trip, you know, no pun, in, uh, no pun intended, but obviously just a good time to be had, and especially if you like the metal genre. So, gentlemen, good luck with the rest of the festival. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you.